We don't have enough range. This is getting ridiculous. We can't park there. We can't. We can't plug in. Owning and operating an electric car in a big city like London is pretty straightforward when there are charging points on almost every street corner. But what happens when you take an electric car out of a city and into the countryside where places to charge are few and far between? That's what we're here to test with a drive that takes this electric vehicle around some of the most beautiful parts of the nation. The atmosphere is electric, so let's charge up and hit the road. Our car of choice for the trip is the Nissan LEAF, currently the most popular all-electric car in Britain, boasting a theoretical range of up to around 100 miles on a single charge. Our 500-mile route will take us through ancient university towns, through national parks and even into the beautiful hills of Wales, stopping along the way to recharge the car at slow, medium or fast charging points. The slowest will take up to 8 hours to recharge the car, while the most powerful will give 80% charge in only half an hour. It's these that we'll have to rely on if we hope to complete our trip in the two days we have. Driving as eco as possible, our range has gone up a few miles to 49. Um, I've also got the regenerative braking active, which is it's kind of like engine braking, except that when it does it, it's actually restoring power back to the battery. We would soon be relying on that regenerative braking very heavily indeed. But for now, an easy drive led us into scenic Cambridge. Okay, so leg one is done. We're in scenic, beautiful Cambridge. Andy, what have you found so far? I found that I like the car. It's quite smooth to drive, but really you've got to be so careful in how you're driving this thing. If you put your foot down of accelerator, you'll see the range of the battery drop dramatically. How far is it to the next stop? It's about 70 miles, I think. And what's the range of the car, roughly? About 80 to 90, so pushing it, but we should be okay. And okay we were, wending our merry way up to a nearby Nissan dealer, our first charging point. The drive was enjoyable, the noise of the electric engine still a novelty. Keep going. taking the fuel filler cap off, but there's no fuel. Instead, I've got this thing, which looks like a space weapon. <laughs> it is working. Well, apparently, we'll see. We've got 47% at the moment, and um, yeah, 48, there we go. And we're not leaving until it's on 100. Charging an electric car is slower than filling up with petrol, however, so getting to 100% in this instance gives us a little time to kill. Of course, we're doing this in an all-electric car, but if you wanted something with a bit more bite, Nissan's GTR is their top-end petrol sports car. Be honest, Luke, would you rather we were doing a road trip in this? Yes. The next stop is Grantham, 71 miles away. In theory, it's well within the car's range, but when we enter the details into the GPS... You might not be able to reach destination. Hmm. Oh well, onwards and upwards, eh? Uh, first time driving an electric car. Uh, the eerie silence you're used to because of hybrids, but what I wasn't used to was how smooth uh, sort of takeoff and driving away is. It's really, really fun to drive. 17 miles to Grantham, and we've currently got 38 miles of range remaining. So it looks like we're doing pretty well. Thanks to my efficient feet and brain. We have made it. Um, we're in Grantham services. And um, so this was interesting because the car said that we're not, we won't have enough range to make it from Cambridge to Grantham and we've done it with probably about 20 miles to spare. Yep. So that's good. We're at another rapid charge point so we've got roughly an hour to kill. And kill it we did. We are well and truly in the countryside now. Look at all this green. We've left the grey and the smoke of London yeah. behind. We've done from 
uh, Grantham to Bakewell and we've got about 37 miles remaining which is more than enough then to get us on to Buxton. How far are we right now from the nearest charging point? What is this air part of the country like for charging? Uh, there are basically none in the Peak District. So we're hoping that the next one we visit is in working order. Yes, and I'm told on good authority that it is. Brilliant, I'll see you shortly. That's Good Authority is a local bed and breakfast owner in Buxton who's kindly agreed to let us use their medium grade charge point after we load up on Bakewell's most famous food. It's all very pleasant, but back on the road, things suddenly get tense. So what's happened, Andy? Well, we were at the bottom of this hill at about 28 miles of range. It's now gone to 12 in only about maybe three minutes of driving. Oh, I'm hoping that's just because we've been going uphill, so I've had to keep my foot on the accelerator. Now we're going downhill a bit. It's going to hopefully extend that range a little. Come on. So close. So close. But I don't know where this guy's charging point is. It's there, and there are cars in it. Oh, no. Man. Oh no, what do we do? We can't park there. We can't, we can't plug in. Except we could, because as the B&B's proprietor helpfully explained, our cable was long enough to perch behind the other guests and suck down some much needed power. A near miss, but we left the leaf charging again, feeling that at last we'd got the hang of this whole electricity thing. We are technology experts after all. So as it turns out, plugging the car into the outlet isn't the whole story. You actually have to turn the power on. Lesson learned. What that does mean is that the hour and a half we just gave it on charge, it actually hasn't given the car any more range. So what we've done is popped it on charge again. Yeah, it's only going to get about 10-15 minutes charge, so we're not going to have the same range we would have had before. So we have got to alter our plans a little bit. This is getting ridiculous. We left the B&B with about uh, 21 miles of range. We've come about a mile and it now says 16 miles of range because we've had to go uphill quite a lot. Luckily though, we're about to go down into what's called Goit Valley, all downhill. Fingers crossed. Fingers, cr fingers and toes crossed. Cross everything, Luke, because this is... Because we are... I, d I don't know that AA comes out here, Andy. 18! 18 miles of range. We are racking up the miles now. We're getting it back. Yes, give me more power. So we definitely made it to the countryside in an electric car. <laughs> we have. Whether we make it out <laughs> is a much more pertinent question right now because we've only got 14 miles of range, which uh... is going to be just enough to get us to our overnight location at a push. So we're very close to our next charging point, so but we've, close. But we've yeah, encountered so an unusual uh, obstacle. This is one of the benefits of living in the country. You don't so much get like traffic jams, you get dairy jams. Cattle proved no obstacle, however, and with a close eye on our regenerative braking, we let the leaf carry us to our final stop of the day. It's been tense, but ultimately successful. And as we pull up, we really feel we've cracked the code to rural electric automobiling. Careful driving and a lot of planning. That's it. That's the end. Indeed, we're so sure we've got it down, we even recorded an outro for this video, thinking there probably won't be much to say on day two. Stay tuned to CNET.com. We are idiots. A few hours into day two, we're already dancing with danger. The 75 mile drive from Buxton to our first stop, a service station in Oswestry, is pushing our fully charged leaf to its limits. As we approach the charge point, the range indicator isn't looking too happy. We're half a mile away from the services. We're so close to getting more power, but we have- This has, this has been on zero for probably about a mile now. We're, we're flatlining, but we're we're close. Take the third exit. Absolutely nothing. Oh, that was close. <gasps> but there's a problem. The service station's sole charging point isn't working, with the screen unresponsive and no power flowing. After prodding ineffectually of a display, we call the support number on the front of the charge point. Thanks for calling the Eco Kinsley Electric Highway. Our offices are currently closed. Our opening hours on Monday to Friday, 8.30am to 5.30pm. I'm ridiculously low as well. So I checked. 
A fellow Leaf driver pulls up behind us, but our combined efforts aren't enough to get the Charger rebooted, which a little Google searching suggests is what we need to do. Doesn't do anything. Is that Sandy? Have you encountered this before ever? I've encountered Chargers down, but not Chargers, shall we say, so far in the wilderness. Right now, Oh, I'm going to have to go and look at my map and try and work out what plan B is. Have you been a happy Leaf owner generally? Oh yeah, yeah, I love the car. Absolutely superb car. Beautiful to drive. The Ecotricity Network's great. Unfortunately, they went from 24-7 customer service to Monday to Friday office hours. Right. There was a time you could phone them any time, day or and night. Sort it out. You'd phone them, somebody would be on the other end and they'd, they could do a reboot. Have you had to do that before? No, I haven't but I've met people that have. Right, things break down, you know, things don't work all the time, you know, it happens. With petrol pumps, you pull into a petrol station, petrol pumps are out all the time, but in that situation, there are many, many more. So, I've had to call for a tow. The, the annoying thing is that they are gonna have to come and tow the car. They're only towing it just a few miles down the road into the town centre, into where there is a, a Nissan dealership which has a charger. It's just that we arrived with s such a little amount of power left, so we just can't risk driving it ourselves. Did they give an ETA? Within the hour. Okay, that's a wasp's nest. Before cabin fever can truly take hold, it's time to get towed. It's not a great feeling, but at least we're moving, even if it's not under our own steam. At the closest charge point in nearby Nissan dealer, we meet another intrepid Leaf owner whose family holiday has been disturbed by charging issues. A few problems with some of the chargers, but this one is the most serious problem we've had now, which is mate, we have to stay overnight in the Premier Inn. I mean, would you, would you still recommend electric cars despite oh, yes, that? Yes, definitely, yes. The cars themselves are great. Um, but we need more money spent on the infrastructure to make sure there are enough charging points and that they're maintained properly. Do you want the good news or bad news? The good news? There is none. Do you want the bad news? Yeah. This one's out of order too. On the tow truck again, this time headed to an Asda in Shrewsbury where there's a medium strength charger with our names on it. Third time's a charm. Now I've been char towed, rather, to this Asda to charge here. Problem with that is that none of the cards we have are valid with this charging service. Apparently this is a different service than the ones that we've been using already. We didn't know that and now we can't access the plugs. So again, no way of charging the car and the tow truck has gone. Oh my God. It's, it's pay as you go. It's, it's so exciting. pay as you go, Andy. It's pay I, as you go. I just had to download an app and I put money on the app. And, and it worked. And now this. And it's in. Look! And it's in! Is it charging? Please, 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 please. The light's blue! Andy, the car's charging right now. With the car sucking down power, we could get on the road again. But our mission to drive a cross-country route in an all-electric car could only be called a failure. We would soon make tracks for home, but not before shooting a real outro. And here it is. So, Andy, electric cars on long drives in the UK, what's the verdict? Well, it doesn't look too good, to be honest. We planned our route and charging points down to the mile, and we drove extremely economically. Yet still, because of only one charging point being out of order, we had to rely on a tow truck to get us out of trouble. Now, these long drives are possible. It just takes a hell of a lot of planning and a certain amount of luck. Yeah, I think maybe surprisingly, this experience hasn't really put us off electric cars. I mean, we had a really good time driving this one, but the support's just not there. I mean, this technology has so much potential, but it needs that infrastructure to really push it forwards. Electric driving definitely is the future. It just has a long way to go yet. But do let us know what you think about electric cars and whether you would consider buying one yourself and make sure to stay tuned to CNET. I think we nailed it. Yeah.